That's that's what we're living in. We have ways to change that system. We have we have options that we can take. Uh, community policing, de-escalation training, limited use of uh, of guns. Uh, we can help with mandatory counseling, help with PTSD tra uh, training. Maybe don't militarize the shit out of them. How about we take the ordinance where the Department of Defense gives surplus military grade weapons to small town police officers, right? Like Dothan, Alabama is where the insurgency lies, you know? Because Battle Creek, Michigan, holy shit, that's an aggressive sounding name. There are options on the table and we need to take those options to help people. Help people that uh, that are citizens and that are cops that want to serve citizens. The whole mentality has to change. There has to be a whole shift in all of that. And that shift lies in the middle of pure law and order. Uh, you know, justice will be served swiftly and as blindly as possible to all cops and bastards. The, 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 the actual solution lies in the middle. Um yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, do I have time to do another quick? Seven ten. Okay. Is that a no? Maybe. It's a maybe. All right, I'll go into it and then uh, I'll cut it off uh, when uh, when time is up. We're we're trying to run a few errands tonight. Uh, but uh, one of the other things I did want to talk about because I've talked about the cop thing for like. A half hour. There's a lot to cover with the with the police brutality issue, um, and uh, one of the other things that I did I did want to talk about uh, was the squad. Whoa, the squad! Oh man, uh, <laughs> um, the whole thing with the squad, you know, like them going after Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi going after them, and then Donald Trump telling them all to go back to their countries. Uh, this whole thing is a distraction. That's all it is. It's a Twitter distraction. We have so many bigger things going on in the country. And mainstream media and uh, corporate media and all this stuff is... They're only talking about the Twitter beef between fucking Donald Trump and Ilhan Omar and AOC um, and, uh, and Nancy Pelosi and uh, Rashida Tlaib, right? And here's the thing. Uh, Donald Trump telling them to go back to their own country, that is some shit that I have faced since I was eight years old. When I was eight years old in 1997, people were telling me to go back to my country. And once a year, I'll hear that. Like once a year, I'll hear somebody come out and be like, go back to your own country. It's like, why don't you? That was like the easiest response, right? Why don't you go back to your country? And when I was a kid, I never really like... Under, like people get kind of fidgety about it, and uh, because this is this is a country that was that kind of was about immigrants, right? The problem with the natives uh, that were here in the 1600 is like they had too open of an immigration policy, uh, and then the Puritans were like, "Wow, that's awesome! Let's genocide the natives uh, and just take over the country." That's kind of what happened. Uh, but after that, we there there was a big wave of uh, of immigrants that came into the country that uh, that built America, that made America what it was. Uh, some of them some of them were brought here forcefully, slaves, um, and that was always like the defense to go back to your own country. Why don't you, right? And then I realized that's really hard because at this point, so many people uh, that that called themselves American citizens are mutts. You know, like they're 23 percent German, 36 percent Irish, 42 percent Polish, which means that 42 percent of them has been invaded by 100 percent of the world. Uh, and they can't go back to where they came from, because if we did, we would have to send pieces of them back to those countries. And I think that would uh, violate some kind of U.N. charter for sure, for sure. Right. Only one sixteenth of most people can stay here because everybody's one sixteenth Cherokee in America. So. <laughs> but that was like the easy response. But like that's a, but that, I mean, this became a fucking news story. It ran through the goddamn ringer. No mainstream media wanted to talk about the Daniel Pantaleo thing. No mainstream media is talking about what's, what might be going on in Iran. 
right? Like there's an oil tanker that may or may not have been attacked. There's a lot of sketchy things going on there. Uh, America's trying to go to war with Iran. There's might be, America might be trying to go to war with fucking, um, with Venezuela. That might be a thing that's happening. <laughs> like n- none of the mainstream media wanted to cover that. On top of which, they don't really want to talk about immigration for what it is. Immigration is an administrative issue, right? What's happening at the border with with the detention centers, with kids being kept in these detention centers without cleaning services, uh, without a way to clean themselves up, without without like proper food, proper uh, proper sanitation, all that shit is fucking. De- that's fucking deplorable. That the act of that is deplorable, and we were doing that back when Obama days. People forget Obama deported more immigrants than the last three presidents combined. That was a thing that he did. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, like we forget that, and we're not talking about it. We're not having an honest discussion about immigration, and the honest discussion about immigration is that it is an administrative problem. We don't know how many people can come in here. We don't know how many people are leaving. We don't know how many people are overstaying their visas. So it all gets flooded under this thing of Mexicans. Oh, the Mexicans are coming. Oh, they're coming back to their land, the Mexicans. That's what it turns into. When realistically, it should be, why are these kids kept in, why are these kids and families kept in these detention centers? It's because they can't get processed to figure out whether what they're saying is actually true and who their family members in this country are. And why can't we do that? Because there's not enough people to process all that kind of shit. Well, maybe instead of spending their money on ICE, the hundreds and billions of dollars that we're spending on ICE, going around doing raids that, that happened in Pittsburgh, by the way, where in my hometown, not, not a couple miles from here where I live. People are getting profiled on the streets. Instead of spending money on your fucking uh, profile brigade, Maybe spend money on some people that know how to process paperwork. It's an administrative issue. How many people can come in here? What are the job, what are the jobs and resources available for people? Do we have that figured out? How do we handle? How do we make the citizenship process a lot easier? I mean, I'm we're going through it right now, and the paperwork alone is outrageous. It's ridiculous. I don't I don't even know how people that haven't been here even that have been here for five years, that are like over the age of 30 or something, you know, that probably have a a little bit harder of time with learning the language and the vernacular and all that stuff. How do they fill out these forms? They have to go to somebody to do it. They have to spend money on a lawyer now, and then they have to spend money on the application itself. How many people know that? It's an administrative problem. We don't have good administrative uh, uh solutions for the immigration problem because it's not sexy what is sexy is uh is a roided out old dude trying to kick down the doors of an immigrant's house or somebody that he thinks is an illegal immigrant's house right undocumented immigrant's house that's sexy that's some shit fucking they can play on fox and friends or a morning joe or, or rachel maddow can talk about you know and, and lose your shit about. That sells soap. The squad? The squad having a, a Twitter beef with Pelosi? That's sexy. And look, I'm not saying I'm not saying what Nancy Pelosi is doing is right. I'm no fan of Pelosi. Uh, but there are, if you want to talk about immigration, then good. Let's have a conversation about immigration. Let's have a conversation about how to allocate information and data and f- solve this problem as an administrative problem as it is. That's what it's an administrative problem. That's what we should be solving it as. But they don't. Do we come up with these little nicknames and hashtags, you know, and, and we go about doing that? Uh, we, we have our little anger, anger bouts, and nobody talks about the rest of it. Nobody's talking about how to actually solve what's going on in these detention centers. How do we allocate funds in order to just get them basic needs? Basic needs to sanitation, food, maybe a decent place to fucking sleep. That's your introduction to America, by the way. Greatest country in the world is keeping them in conditions less than prison friendly. That's your introduction to the greatest country in the world. 
That's what you want? That That's the definition of the greatest country in the world? Come on. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.